introduce you to John Wentz and, um, and what's new with Alpha. So I just wanna say a word about why we're excited about Alpha. Um, when I first started in my role as executive minister of Make and Deepen Disciples, uh, it was about, it's almost seven years ago now, um, I, someone from Alpha reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in talking? And I, at first I said, oh, Alpha, you know, oh, I heard about that. Isn't that kind of like, this is not what I said exactly, but I said, oh, it's like an older thing, right? I mean, it's been around for a while. And I, you know, I just had Nikki Gumbel in my mind and thinking about it for something from, you know, from decades ago, or I mean, yeah, that, that was my impression. But um, as I got talking and as I got knowing them, they said, oh man, we have actually um, updated you know, the curriculum. We've updated our approach. We've been changing things uh, so that we're much better able to reach diverse uh, and younger generations. Like we're totally different alpha than you might remember. And I was so pleasantly surprised. And um, it's been on my agenda to highlight Alpha for some time. So I'm grateful that we're able to do that this year. And I will also say that I've been very impressed with how their ministry has um, not only survived uh, through the pandemic, but also thrived uh, in that Alpha has also seen much uh, fruit in terms of virtual ministry and virtual outreach or even hybrid approaches. So I am just so, so delighted uh, for you to learn more about them today. Uh, here's one of my, here's a favorite quote that I have from John. It turns out the Holy Spirit is not bound by geographical distance, and he is quite comfortable to minister to someone across the internet. Who would think? Wow. So a word about John Wentz. He oversees the ministries of Alpha as executive vice president. In the past 20 years, he has served as a church planter, campus minister, author of the coaching guidebook, a practical guide to coaching ministry leaders. John has also served at Community Christian Church in Chicago, Illinois, as the small group director overseeing their 12 campuses, small group directors. John is passionate about helping churches to create missional environments where people can explore faith, ask questions, and share their point of view. So we are delighted to welcome you today, John. Please take it away. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really honored to be here with everyone and excited to talk a little bit about Alpha. But before we do, it might be helpful for me to see just what everyone's experience with Alpha is. So I believe we have a poll that we want to launch, and you should be able to answer a couple of questions that pop up here. And we'll share this poll with everyone. But Curious to know what your experience level is with Alpha and what you're hoping to learn today. And that will be really helpful for me to make sure that I can serve you well with our time. So I do live in the Chicagoland area, just a few additional biographical things. I love donuts and pastries and I love running as well, which enables my donut and pastry, you know, problem, or I mean, um, affection. And I've got three teenage kids. Uh, my two oldest are in college. My, my oldest goes to Grand Canyon University in Phoenix. And uh, his brother attends Wabonzi Community College here in the Chicagoland area. And then I have a daughter who's going to turn 16, Lord help us all, in January. And she's amazing and uh, beautiful inside and out. So anyway, curious for everyone who is answering this poll, what you all would say. So once everybody uh, has answered that, Tina, you can go ahead and share the results. And I'll be curious for everyone to see. So it looks like most in here have never run Alpha. So maybe not familiar with what Alpha is. 
Uh, we've got a few veterans, it looks like, uh, who've run Alpha years ago. So that's really exciting. And uh, today, people are curious to know how to do Alpha online and what is different about Alpha. So we'll, we'll kind of hit a little bit of all of this. Uh, that's really helpful. So as we do continue, I want to uh, just, I'll share a portion of my screen here. Um, and as we talk about Alpha, let me start with uh, this little video clip. This just gives you, uh, we have refilmed uh, a significant portion of the Alpha talks and talked with many people on the street just in the last couple of months to hear some of their questions about what they're wrestling with and why Alpha might be relevant at this time. So here we go. happen to good people. What's the purpose behind all this? What did he have in mind when he created me? <sighs> Why do we exist? <laughs> Why are we here? What's next? How did I do? Why do we have such a short life? What was the initial purpose of life? Why are we here? Why do we have to die? Why he made life so hard sometimes? I guess the ultimate question would be why? Why? I feel uh, most alone uh, when I'm surrounded by a lot of people. I feel like I have to fight just to be in the room. No one sees my side. Sometimes you just feel like you're in it alone, having to make the decisions all by yourself. I feel the most alone when I feel uh, misunderstood. When people are not listening. It feels like no one gets me. I don't believe in God. I don't have an answer. I don't know the answer to that. At the end of Alpha, we had the Alpha Day away. The Lord was in that place. I knew going home from that weekend away on Alpha that I was not alone and I had nothing to fear. I have amazing opportunity just to spread his love, expose people to him. Going to Alpha was one of the best decisions I made in my life because I learned the truth about who Jesus was. I knew I wanted to share with other people what had happened to me. I wanted to see the Lord move that way in other people too. I think people just need to feel wanted, loved, and accepted. I think I always want to be known for who we really are. They need a place where they feel like uh, they belong. All right. Well, those were some great, honest questions from people that we met in New York, LA, Memphis, uh, different parts of the country. And you can hear the real uh, curiosity. The and it's and it's not just from up here. It's really a deeper questioning that people are asking right now. Um, how I came into contact with Alpha was when I was on staff at Community Christian Church in Chicago. I was overseeing our small groups. We had 14 locations at the time, and we were rolling out all of the Bless initiatives. And actually I helped uh, to put together this small little, we called it a pocket guide. And I joked with Dave, I said, you know, your book in all this content is great, but for the average person in the church, they need something like a little simpler. So we put together, this is like 12 pages just to understand what uh, Bless was all about. And we started looking at all of our small groups across the church and really ranking, you know, were they beginning with prayer? Were they listening? Were they eating with people? Were they listening? Were they getting to a place where they could share uh, their story? And were they serving people? And we found lots of groups were praying 
lots of groups were going out and serving. But the other parts of bless weren't happening. You know, they, they weren't getting to a place where they could have spiritual conversations or very rarely were they able to do that. And less often were they actually eating with people. And then I went to Alpha, our Alpha ministry that we had started. And I realized, wow, actually they're doing, they're praying, they're listening, eating, serving people, and they're sharing their story every single week. And I realized that Alpha was one of the most missional expressions we had at the church. And it wasn't just something that you could do in the church. It was something you could do outside of the church as well. And we began running Alpha in prisons. We began running Alpha in schools. And Alpha really was one of the ways that I felt like churches could kind of crack the missional code. You know, they, they, could, they could figure out a way to do this, whether they were small churches, home churches, or large churches. And the more I got to learn about Alpha, the more I realized that, you know, Alpha was, was definitely something uh, that we could do. Uh, it was happening all over the world. Uh, you know, millions of people have actually gone through Alpha. We're in over close to 170 countries, and it's translated in over 100 languages. So this is a tool. Some of you are saying, okay, great. Well, what is Alpha? That's great that it works. And it's great that it's missional, but what in the world is Alpha? So I want to show just a quick little video of hopefully help describe uh, what Alpha is for you. Let me make sure that I have uh, enabled sound. We're good to go on that. So here we go. Here's what Alpha is. Having conversations about life, faith, and Jesus is hard. And this is interesting because at some point, everyone wrestles with life's big questions. Questions about hope, purpose, meaning, and love. Imagine creating a space where people in our community, our friends, neighbors, and coworkers can come and have conversations in a way that is authentic and unforced where leaders don't need to have all the answers and anyone can ask tough questions and share honestly about what they believe. That's what Alpha is all about. Alpha started in a church in London years ago with a simple idea to engage friends who might not typically go to church. Lives were transformed and it began to grow all over the world. Today, you can find Alpha in schools, coffee shops, church buildings, prisons, and homes. And so far, millions of people have experienced Alpha. So what is Alpha? Alpha is a series of interactive sessions exploring the basics of the Christian faith. In each session, you eat food, listen to a talk, and have discussions in small groups. Eating food together creates space for people to connect, relax, and build friendships. The talks tackle core questions about life and faith from a Christian perspective. And the discussion allows people to unpack these ideas without fear of being corrected or judged. All of this is done in a fun environment where anyone is welcome. There are three main sets of talks you could use. The Alpha Film Series, Alpha with Nikki Gumbel, and the Alpha Youth Series. Each is designed with a different audience in mind and is typically run over 8 to 12 weeks, with a weekend away where there are opportunities to experience worship through music and moments for prayer. Alpha also comes with everything you need to empower others to be involved, like discussion guides and training videos for you and your team. And all the talks and tools are available online and can be downloaded for free. By running Alpha, you're creating a space where people can connect with each other and connect with God. Sign up, get started, run Alpha today. All right, so that's a basic history of what Alpha is. All of the resources are completely available at no cost. So if you go to alphausa.org, uh, you can just click on that, go up to the top, and you'll be able to access all of the resources, all of the videos, discussion guides, training materials. We want to make all of this available to the entire global church uh, with no barriers. And it's a core value 
for us that we give everything away. It all belongs to God anyway. So we're not here to uh, make any money on that. But when I first started running Alpha, or when I first learned of Alpha, I thought it would never work, actually. I, I had gotten a degree in evangelism and church planting. I did my master's degree in church history, historical theology. And I heard that Alpha was something that you did over 10 weeks. And I was like, there's no way. That is way too long. We can shorten this. We can go faster. We can help people discover who Jesus is much quicker than that. Uh, this was created years ago, so clearly it needs updating. Maybe we can rewrite some of the content. That's all of the questions that I was thinking. And then I put a volunteer team in charge of Alpha, and I wanted to know if it was actually reproducible. So I gave them no budget. And I just said, look, if you can do this on no budget, then I'll know we can reproduce this at all of our locations and across our church planting network. And to my surprise, they did it on no budget. They figured out how to do it creatively. Uh, they you know, got creative with the meals and got lots of people involved, created a great sense of ownership actually amongst the group that launched it. And to my surprise, also half the people that were part of Alpha came to faith. And I was like, oh, wow, this is like the first time we're doing this. I just told them, just try it, make as many mistakes as you need to, to figure it out and just keep track of the mistakes, and try not to repeat them in the future. And, but the first time they did it, second time they did it, half the people came to faith. The third time they did it, something really surprising uh, got me. There was a guy on that weekend away that they talk about. And on the weekend away, uh, there's an opportunity for the small group leaders to offer to pray for the guests. It's one of the few times on Alpha where we actually pray with the guests. And it comes after a talk, how can I be filled with the Holy Spirit? So we say, hey, look, God's real. Jesus is alive. If you want to interact with him, you can. We'd love to pray with you for anything that's going on. And so for many people, it's the first time anyone ever prays for them uh, that they have actually experienced. A lot of people say, oh, I'll pray for you, but they never actually have a prayer experience. So there was this one guy named Dave, and he said, well, yeah, give it your best shot. <laughs> like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you can pray for my back. It's been killing me. And, uh, you know, I've been taking drugs for this all year, but my back's just not getting any better. So if you could pray, give it your best shot. And this one girl came over and very simply, she put her hand near his lower back and just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And he jumped. He said, what'd you do to my back? And she said, well, I just prayed that you'd be healed. And he said, well, my back is all hot. What, did you put something on me? And she said, no. And he started moving around. He got really quiet. And then he said, oh my God, this is real, isn't it? And very quickly, this experience that he had with God opened his eyes and he gave his life to Christ right there. And I was like, what? Okay, this is interesting. I like, that was cool. I mean, the fruit of this experience was that he gave his life to Jesus. And today he's still a faithful follower. This was in 2012. It was one of my very first experiences where I saw God do something incredible in that space. And it really piqued my curiosity to want to learn what was happening on Alpha. Because clearly I had an idea of what this should look like. And there was something that was happening that was legitimate, that was very simple and effective. And I wanted more of that. So I want you to hear a story from a church in uh, New York City uh, that recently ran Alpha. And uh, this was their experience just in the last year of running Alpha. So here we go. My name is Charles Galbraith. I serve as the pastor here at Clarendon Road Church here in central Brooklyn. I've been here for 11 years. We're a predominantly Caribbean congregation uh, representing over 26 different nations uh, that join together and celebrate Jesus. 2020 was a year that we will never 
ever forget. Uh, it uh, started with joy and expectation, and then uh, the pandemic of COVID-19 hit, and it hit us uh, deeply. We had, unfortunately, uh, up to 12 members who passed away, uh, funerals upon funerals, the people who lost their jobs. As uh, the year progressed, uh, I felt as a pastor that we were just disconnected. Um, this is a congregation that values uh, intimacy and values the family dynamic that takes place, and we really weren't experiencing that. People were shut in, and then we were wondering how are we going to minister to people who are shut in? People were depressed, people were locked in, they had no place to go. They're crying out, God, where are you? Why is this pandemic here? And here came Alpha. I was actually on a call with a fellow pastor here in New York City, and I heard about Alpha. Hearing it from a fellow pastor uh, who was in the city, I said, okay, this isn't just something for someone else in the suburbs or in a rural uh, aspect, but rather, I think this can, this can work in the city. So pastor made a nice video. We sent it out. We promoted it. You can revisit the basics of the faith. We had 93 people sign up. And people showed up with excitement. When the video came on and everything came on and they went into their breakout rooms, when they came back, oh, this was so good, wonderful, rah, rah, rah. We can't wait till next week. We were uh, overwhelmed, I have to say just 100% overwhelmed with how, not just how it was led, but particularly how people leaned in. So people brought out things about their faith that they would not be free to share in a church setting or in an open Bible study because they may feel, oh, you're asking that question. No, they were free. For us, it was something we can't go back from. We're having two cohorts starting uh, in, uh, in in the fall for us, which we're excited about. We have folks who went through Alpha who are going to be those facilitators uh, for, for Alpha. And so we see this as something that's going to be continue on as just part of uh, the life of our church, uh, as well as I, I think it kind of builds in a healthy framework of discipleship and leadership as well. God did two things. He brought Zoom and it brought Alpha. It brought healing to people that they were able to talk about their pain of what they were going through in the midst of the crisis and apply it back to scripture. And I was very blessed and encouraged by that. Amen. 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 Woo. Praise the Lord. I love her. She's so fantastic. Um, you know, God brought two things, Zoom and Alpha. I was like, okay. Uh, and it was true, you know, like when we're all locked up, uh, you know, in 2020, we had a choice. Are we just going to go on break or are we going to continue to be on mission? And, you know, I think it was an opportunity to think creatively and try new things. Now, maybe some of you have seen uh, this grid before, this mastery piece over here is how well, how good you are at something. And the creativity piece down at the bottom is how new something is to you. So um, this is uh, typically the, the flow of things. When you're new at something, uh, down here in the bottom right, you're not very good at it. We say that that's the experimenting quadrant. You're trying new things. You have more questions than uh, answers. Uh, it's like when you move. You don't know your way in and out of parking lots. You feel dumb, right? If you've ever moved to a new place, if you've ever done something new, you go to a new church. Um, I like to tell people, if you really want to know what it's like to be new at a church, go visit somebody else's church. Or if you're brave enough, go to a synagogue, go to a mosque and experience what it's like to not know all the cultural rules, to not know anyone or to know where you're, what you're supposed to do. That's how people feel. But this is really the missionary quadrant, the experimenting quadrant. You're trying something new. You're not very good at it. 
you have more questions than answers. But the good news is, is over time, right, you move up to this expert quadrant because you get better at things. And, you know, everybody wants to be there. Everybody wants to be an expert on something. Uh, but we don't stay in this expert quadrant for very long because over time it's no longer new right the thing that you're doing uh just kind of becomes old hat and you just get really good at it you get really efficient and you get into the motions of things and the longer you're there you actually begin to expire it's no longer new and you actually lose some of your effectiveness over time because it's not fresh well, what the pandemic did and what all of the, more than just the pandemic, the entire last season, what that did for us is it forced all of us into this quadrant where we either expired or you're on this call. So you didn't expire. You're ex you are now experimenting, right? You're in this quadrant where we're all in a new world where everything is new and we've got to figure out how to do it. None of us are good at it, right? That's an opportunity. This is the opportunity quadrant, because like we said, you're going to get better at it. You're going to become an expert. You're going to be able to do something new. Well, I would say alpha is a great opportunity for you to maybe try something new if you haven't done it. So for 47% of you who said never run alpha, this might be the season for you to do it. So what is alpha? It's food. You eat together. You hear a short talk. You watch a video together. Uh, and they're great. The, the videos are very interactive. Uh, some of you who are familiar with the old Nikki videos, just watch, listening to a sermon, it's more than that. They're actually a film with interaction and stories and testimonies. It's like a TV show. And then what's unique about Alpha is the discussion. This is the listen in Bless, because we actually don't answer people's questions. They can share their point of view, they can ask any question, and then we just throw it out to the group and say, well, what do you all think? And they could say, well, I think God's an alien. And we'd say, interesting, why do you think that? And, and what do you all think? Uh, the whole, what makes Alpha unique is we don't correct people. We let them be, maybe in our perspective, wildly heretical. We give heresy a seat in the group and we love them and we listen to them and we try to understand them and we honor them. Uh, it doesn't mean we have to say, yeah, you're right, but we can say you're loved and you're listened to. And then we spend this time, you know, the, the weekend away, the time away. Uh, and if you do that online, all of these same things apply. You can show hospitality to, to people that are exploring faith and, and, you know, the Greek word for hospitality is actually two Greek words that are put together. It's the word, you know, philo and xenos. Philo is the word for love. Xenos is the word for stranger. So philodzenos literally means to love the stranger. That is the opposite of xenophobia, which is the fear of the stranger. And right now, our culture is filled with xenophobia. And we have a, we're actually commanded in scripture to show philo xenos. We're, there's no commandment to fear the stranger. It's always to love the stranger. And that's what hospitality is. And that's the culture of alpha. Now, some of you are probably curious, what are, what's the content of alpha? For those of you who are curious of the content of alpha, these are the topics that we cover in all of those videos. You can see it's all very basic uh, content. The beauty of this is that every major denomination globally has used alpha. And I think that's a bit of a miracle. When you think about how di divided the church is, it's a miracle that all the major denominations can say, yeah, we use alpha. Because the reality is, is we actually have way more in common than we have different. And so when we focus on the core of the gospel and the kingdom, then we are all together on things. So that's the content of Alpha. Here, here's maybe just kind of fun to see some pictures of some different Alphas. Now, these were all pre-pandemic Alphas, okay? So this is before social distancing, but you can see we've got a Catholic context up here in the top right. 
they did a very formalized alpha. You know, people uh, came and they, you know, white tablecloths and everything else. Down in the bottom right, an Anglican church in Dallas, they just rented out an entire bar. And they said, we're taking over Tuesday nights. And they booked out the entire place. They packed it out. Tons of people brought their friends. And it was this fun environment. This place here on the left, Vintage Church in LA, uh, they created their own bar, actually. Um, and they had, they had a, this is their alpha pub that they created with a, a two drink maximum. So nobody, you know, they gave everybody tickets. They're like, all right, this is not an opportunity for people to get drunk but we do want non-Christians to feel comfortable. And if I'm going to invite my non-Christian over, my non-Christian neighbor or friend, then it's got to be something that they're a familiar setting. And so one pastor, we actually went uh, to their alpha and people were wandering around. This is the inside of their church. It's actually the church where um, the uh, uh, father of the bride was filmed. And uh, so this is the church uh with martin short you may remember that old movie anyways one pastor was there and they were hanging out you know in this lobby area and he spoke to one of the uh the girls who was there and said hey how long have you been coming to alpha and she's like coming to what and he's like alpha and she's like oh is that what they call this she's like oh i just thought it was like this party every week that i come to but what's super cool is you learn about christianity and jesus and you can ask whatever the F you want. And he was like, oh. And she's smoking a cigarette. And she's like, it's the coolest thing ever. She's like, they're serious. You can ask anything. You can say anything. And it's like the most real conversations ever. And for that pastor to hear that, interact with this person, he's like, what have I been doing in ministry? This is the most raw real conversation he's like i felt like i was matthew in the new testament interacting with the very people that i need to be interacting with and so you know you look at uh these alphas and here, here's an alpha in fort lauderdale uh, where they did a spoken word night and uh everyone who was there so these people would just come out for spoken word and then they said you know what part of life is exploring faith and meaning. And so they began, they started running Alpha here with all of these folks in Fort Lauderdale at this church called The Font. So what I would say is Alpha creates a front porch space in your community. In a time when we basically lost front porch spaces. You know, a front porch, these are, I used to live in inner city Cincinnati and all of our houses looked like the, the house on the right. You know, very small, very narrow, very little porches. But this is where people would come and hang out. Then I moved to Springfield, Illinois, into a historic neighborhood. This is um, a, like all of our porches looked like this on the left. And it is where all of our neighbors would come and hang out. And literally, our entire block, everybody had front porches like that. And that's where we spent time together with all of our neighbors. But there's so many neighborhoods that don't have any front porches anymore. A lot of new architecture has stopped building front porches on houses. They instead just build security garages and security fences. And so our culture reflects the architecture of our communities and our churches follow suit. We don't really have kind of that easy liminal space or the, the front porch space where someone can come and interact with us. They're either in our church or on the street. Or they're in their own house behind their own fence, behind their own, you know, security wall. And so we've got to figure out places to create these front porch environments. And Alpha is one of those places where you can do that, where people can come and bring any question. So speaking of questions, I'm going to stop talking uh, for the moment. I'm going to, if you give me just a second, some of you have some questions about Alpha. And if you do have questions, uh, maybe you could just throw those into the chat window. And, you know, for some of you who are curious, you know, Alpha really is an effective tool. It works online. It works in person. 
uh, alpha, you know, is a place where people can be real. I love what I love about alpha. There's a youth version of alpha and my two sons who are now in college a uh, year and a half ago when they were both in high school, uh, as soon as the lockdowns happened, they got on Snapchat and invited 30, they just put together a youth alpha and said, hey, we're gonna do youth alpha on Tuesdays and Fridays if anybody wants to join. And they invited 30 of their friends from across four states, some of their friends who'd moved away and they all came. And over the course of like six weeks, they all showed up twice a week uh, and they did theme nights. They just had fun. It was a place to belong. And, you know, it was, it was a great experience for them. And it was fun to watch these students lead their friends. You know, just the leadership development that they experienced was worth the alpha, in my opinion. Regardless of what happened with any of their friends and the guests, I was just excited as a dad to see my two boys leading and being intentional to bless their friends. So, Michelle, you've got a question. How are the Nikki Gumbel videos different from the other videos? Well, we have, uh, perhaps I could show uh, a trailer at the end uh, that has the Alpha Film Series trailer uh, that you might find uh, helpful. But you'll, I'll make sure to... Uh, make sure we get time to show that. Another question, does Alpha have a radio spots or TV spots for advertising that you could use? Uh, or should you try, how should you try and get the word out? Uh, well, let me actually, I'm gonna share my screen and take you to our website where you can see uh, all of that content, uh, Robert's home. Uh, so let me go to, I think we can do basic screen sharing. Here's our website. So if you create an alpha and uh, you go to our website, you'll see I've got, uh, I had, I ran a, I just created a funny name here, the bull honky alpha. That was a previous alpha that I ran. Um, this, once you create an alpha, it'll take you in here and it gives you all the resources for free. You can go to the promote tab and then there's all of this promotional material. So we have partnered with Outreach uh, Marketing and many of these, some of these videos that I'll show you the alpha trailer here that's part of our video series, but you can also promote to guests and we've got postcards that you can personalize, uh, all different kinds of sizes, different content that you can put on there. Uh, we have videos that you can share on media. So you could put these on your local uh, TV station if you want, but there's invitation cards. There's different social media uh, posts that you could put. There's a variety of things. Uh, you can customize all of this. So you just download it, make it yours. Uh, this is something that we want to, we do, we update all of the promotional content every single year. So if you want to make signage, uh, there's different signage that you can get and, you know, different sizes, you name it. So videos, signage, invitation cards. Uh, you can also, if you want this in Chinese, Spanish, Mandarin, um, we've got lots of great content there for you. So hopefully that is helpful. The other thing I'll point out here is just our learning center. If you go over here, we've got lots of great training videos that you can use to train your team. And if you go back in here to the dashboard, I'll select this alpha that I've created. Here's all of the series materials. It's, you can download all of this. So any of the talks are yours, uh, the discussion guides, here's some you know, curated resources for promotion, all the discussion guides. We, we've created some books you know, that you can use um, to give to your guests and just send them a digital copy of that. So all of that is available at no cost. The only thing we would ask is that every time you run alpha, you just register your course because we have donors, foundations, grants uh, that support us so that we can make all of this available at no cost. And we have to report back to them on how things are going. 
and that's how we do it is by saying, hey, here's how many people are running alpha. So uh, somebody has a question. Uh, is the Nikki Gumbel video the same as in the past? It's updated. So there, the Nikki videos are pretty much the same. They're updated. Uh, they don't look dated. They did get to a, a point, you know, in 2015 where we're like, okay, these look old. We've updated them so they feel fresh. My recommendation is to use the film series. And actually, I think it might just be helpful right now. I'm going to share uh, that trailer with you right now. And so let me go back to this and we will, I'll try to respond to some of the other questions as they come up. So here is, this video. can everybody hear that? Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions, like why am I here? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? So this is, a, this is what the Alpha Film Series looks like. You can see it's not just a talking head. These are clips that are taken from it. I had arrived at an answer to the most important issue that we humans ever deal with, is there a God? And I had arrived there without ever really looking at the evidence. And I was supposed to be a scientist. At 28, uh, I had gotten many of the things that I thought I wanted. You know, my girlfriend was on the cover of magazines, I had a Beamer, and I was so unhappy. It was a realization maybe that I would, I would never find happiness where I was looking for it. I think for so many years, you know, I always just strive to be strong in myself. All I needed was me and my buddies and, you know, would be like invincible. But the truth is, none of us are. And I found purpose, I found meaning, I found hope. God took something so broken and made it a beautiful art piece. Alpha is a place where you can be yourself. You can say what you think and challenge everything. No, no question is too complex or too simple. And what your point of view is, is as important as anyone else's. We are going on a journey together, an adventure to explore the questions of life, faith, and meaning. So that gives you an idea of how the new film series is a little different than just the uh, Nikki talks previously. And uh, definitely I would encourage you to, to look into that. Somebody had a question here. Um, what happens at the weekend away and how does the Holy Spirit work well for all denominations? Hey John. Well, yes. That was my question. Feel free to answer my questions last. Go ahead to the other people's questions. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, Elise, have you seen multiple churches join together to offer Alpha? Yes, we have. Uh, it's a great tool that works interdenominationally. So, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful things is when churches from different denominations actually get together and agree uh, to say, look, we just want you to know Jesus. And, um, you know, that's actually living out Jesus's prayer in John 17. You know, when we experience unity, then the world will know. So, Yes, uh, when, when you, you can partner with other churches that are running Alpha in your context. Uh, Chris asks, has anyone used Alpha as a replacement for the message time on Sunday? 
uh, in the worship service? If so, how did that go? Did it still feel like worship enough for the congregation? Uh, we would not recommend using this content on a Sunday morning because uh, while the content is really good, the container for the content is just as important, if not more important. And creating the space for small groups to be able to talk, interact, where you can have food together and just have some fun together, that's really what we're trying to create is a, an experience of the gospel, not just a presentation of the gospel. And when people experience the gospel in community, over food, in a communal way, you know, most church services, you just come, sit, listen, watch, and walk away. And Alpha, you come, you eat together, you interact with people, you have a short period of, of watching and listening, but then you open up and you get to ask any question, share your point of view, spend time with each other. And that's really what Alpha is all about. So I would encourage you, some churches do Alpha after or maybe at the Sunday time slot. You know, so people come, they bring their friends and they're like, yeah, you can go to Alpha in the fellowship hall or whatever. That has worked, but they don't try to replace the worship service. Actually, what Alpha does is when you provide a space like Alpha, it allows you to do things in your worship service that are way more genuine for the worship service because you're not trying to create a space for seekers in your worship service. You have that space. That's Alpha. In your worship service, you can worship, you can teach, you can raise your hands without, without abandon, you can really pray and do the things that you need to do. So Alpha creates the front porch space so that you don't have to have the front porch inside your house. Um, I think the British accents have always helped Alpha. Thank you for that, Michelle. Um, do you have Alpha mentors who could walk you through starting a group? Absolutely, and actually, uh, I think we are closing on time here and I wanna be mindful of everyone's time. So I'm gonna share just a couple of simple next steps for everyone. If you are curious on what to do next, uh, you can go to our website and register your course. And then if you wanna get Alpha started, uh, we've got the training materials there where you can learn and then you start building a team, recruit a team, train that team, invite people, promote your course, and then go for it. But if you want to learn how to uh, run Alpha, we actually have some, you know, training events every month. So if you go to our website and scroll to the very bottom of the website and click on events, uh, every single month we have a training event called Run Alpha. And we'll show you and your team how you can actually run Alpha, how to do those things that I just showed you. And it is actually quite simple. And just like my two boys, they were able to get Alpha Youth up and running in just a week. Uh, so students are able to do it very quickly. Churches, I would say it just takes a little bit longer for us adults to recruit people, get them together. And so you want to give yourself a couple months lead time. But if you start working right now, you could easily be ready to launch an Alpha in January after the first of the year and finish it up right before Easter. And it's the perfect time to give it a try. So that's all we got for this short workshop. And I think you, one last question, how about a companion sermon series? We actually do have a companion sermon series uh, that goes with this. It's called Life Shared. And it's a great, it's actually a three week sermon series that you could do uh, to help uh, promote uh, uh, Alpha, and actually it's available for free as well. It's called Life, you go to lifeshareddseries.org, uh, you can do that. And then also another, all of these resources are completely free. Uh, if you want a course on prayer, you can also really bring people through. We've got part one and part two. Part one is called the prayer course. Part two is called the unanswered prayer course. So what happens when God doesn't answer your prayers or people aren't healed when you pray for healing? How do you deal with that? And how do you love people well through that? That's the prayer course. And then the marriage course is a seven week course designed for couples. Uh, they can come. We also have a pre-marriage course. This is a great, like if Alpha is the front porch to your house, I would say the marriage course is the, the steps to the front porch. 
you can use them, you know, just you can do that easily with your neighbors uh, and other couples to come and, and have meaningful conversations about your relationship because the conversations are only between the couples. There's no small group discussion. It's here's the question, now discuss with your partner and uh, discuss with your, with your spouse. So those are a couple of great complimentary uh, tools and the, uh, but the, the life shared small group series is fantastic to do as a three week sermon series leading up uh, to your alpha and all, they're all available for free.